Hello my loves and welcome back to another episode of Strange Playgrounds. Now if you can hear something in the background by the way, a sort of scritching, scratching, that's not some horrific demonic entity, it's my cat Rufus who is having a go at uh, a bag that's on the floor over there quite nearby at the moment. Actually now that I think about it, uh, a, a nefarious demonic entity kind of suits her rather well. Anywho, uh, anyone who's been a fan of this channel for a little while will know that I've got a real penchant for body horror. Absolutely love my body horror. Uh, body horror is a sub-category, a sub-genre of horror that deals with exactly what it says on the tin. It generally deals with the transformation or and or degradation of the human body. It encapsulates a number of not just cultural but also just generally human concerns regarding our own mortality, uh, the the inevitability of our own degradation that comes with age and the accrual of disease and so on and so forth. That's what body horror expresses. At its best, body horror, it often it taps into a very particular cultural zeitgeist and that's often what makes it popular so you had like throughout the late 1970s right through the 1980s and into the early 1990s you had people like david cronenberg who is generally associated with body horror people like um, john carpenter um in cinema exploring certain cultural and political concerns with regards to our own mortality towards the uh, the human condition in terms of its uh, its physical manifestation in terms of our biology that is what body horror is about so you had things like for example the fly which is probably the one of the most overt and intense cancer films you will ever see and it reflects a certain cultural preoccupation because at the time which was sort of the uh, late 1970s early 1980s cultural awareness regarding cancer was escalating to the nth degree as a result of certain uh, media phenomena news media phenomena um, and just the general promulgation of media itself people were just becoming more aware of this stuff because they had greater access to media right um you had things like for example uh john carpenter's the thing in the early 1980s which is a film that encapsulates all sorts of concerns regarding our own bodies um one of which is absolutely the aids epidemic i mean the thing is very 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 much a a, a metaphorical reflection of those concerns it's lots of other things as well i mean there's a a whole host of paranoias and concerns wrapped up in that film uh if you want a, a, a more in-depth example examination of them i would advise see going and taking a look at um the episode of what the hell is wrong with us uh kit power and myself did on the thing where we dive very 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 deep into those concerns indeed um i mean it's it's one of those interesting things the categorization of body horror is problematic it's often more of a it's often more of a marketing thing or a a um critical journalism thing it's more of a rather than something that creators themselves set out to do it, it's just part and parcel of certain kinds of horror um for example i mean you could very very easily argue that one of the earliest examples of body horror is something like frankenstein right but this was would have been long 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 before even the concept of body horror had come about even something like dr jekyll and mr hyde that also concerns it when dr henry jekyll takes his formula and physically becomes edward hyde there are, there are elements of body horror encapsulated in that too just as there is in Dracula, where the body physic, where the, there is a communication, a, a, a an essentially a, a disease-like communication from one body to another that fundamentally transforms not just the body but the soul, the mind, the nature of 
whoever is what whoever the subject is right there is that is a concern of that book it's also wrapped up with other things for example bram stoker's own profound nationalism and racism is also incorporated in that book and in that process i mean the whole thing with dracula is that it's a it's effectively a book about a a, a spiritually diseased foreigner coming into our country and infecting our women and our young people with their disease and making them like him you can definitely see how dracula has a profound sort of brexit uh ukip right wing tory party reading to it because that would de- that was definitely the intention i mean bram stoker's um peculiar form of nationalism and right wingism uh is well documented it's well documented in his own writings um but body horror has very much in sort of the postmodern era it's sort of commingled with certain kinds of science fiction, certain kinds of fantasy even, and metaphysical storytelling, and has become something else. It's, it's, it's become more reflective, more acutely reflective of cultural concerns, and that was very, very intense during Cronenberg's heyday, like throughout the 70s and the 1980s. Um, since that time, it's become sort of crystallized as a genre. As so many genres have, that is sort of what is happening in the present day with regards to certain kinds of genre fiction. You have this situation where we are so saturated by the notions of genre and subgenre, and people are so aware of them and of what they like within those subgenres that there are entire projects dedicated exclusively to them. So there are, for example, um, mammoth collections of body horror. Mammoth is a, a publishing house, by the way, one of the bigger publishing houses out there at the moment. Um, there's a fantastic body horror collection um, from Mammoth, which is absolutely beautiful. It is just called Body Horror, and it incorporates lots of both classic body horror short stories. For example, Who Goes There is in there, which is the uh, the short story that The Thing from Outer Space and later the 1980s The Thing are based on. Um, it also has stories from Clive Barker, from the, the writer I really want to discuss this evening, which is, uh, today rather, which is Paul Kane, um, and various others. It's basically like, if you want to understand what body horror is, then that is an excellent collection to start with. But the collection I really want to discuss today, and the one that's got me thinking about what body horror is and what concerns it expresses, is a, a collection by Paul Kane, and it's, it's exclusively of his stories called... Um, traumas it's called traumas and that really does give you some it gives you some indication of the kind of story that you're going to find in here i mean i deal with body horror all the time in my own short story collections as those of you who have read them know and very often those transformations are traumatic but very often the trauma is a gateway to something else right i mean if you read the born in blood books then almost every story in that collection is about transformation and indeed a traumatic transformation of some kind but it's also about metamorphosis traumas paul kane's collection is really really interesting in that it deals with exactly that it is exactly that it is about exploring the necessary trauma that comes with bodily transformation uh, and metaphorically dealing with change in general it uses body horror as a strange kind of metaphor for more general kinds of trauma and transformation Uh, which are necessary to living it's a really fascinating collection and the one that really got me the one that arrested me when i read it is this story that i is ostensibly on the face of it such a simple thing it is such a simple notion it is effectively body horror reduced down to its very essence it's effectively a manifesto of what body horror is in general and it's it's called biorhythms it's very early on in the collection and what really got me about it is that it isn't anything there's not really a plot there's not really there's not there's nothing abstruse or strange or supernatural or even like there's nothing science fiction in it all biorhythms does and it's the most it's the most genius thing it is the most incredible thing it just 
effectively describes the general processes, the biological processes of our bodies, but in a manner and in a situation where we are conscious of them. So the main character is it's told almost entirely from his perspective and he's just this guy who is obsessed with control he's he's a he's sort of like a you know he's a billionaire he it takes you through his life how he and how he became a billionaire how he sort of took he's basically almost he's got like a sort of libertarian quality to him and that is an aspect of this story as well there is very much a kind of um a kind of metaphorical refutation of libertarianism and certain right-wing forms of thinking, you know, that sort of rugged independence, you that Nietzsche and you have to take control of your life. There is a corollary to that here, almost like a, it's, all, it, it's a parody, a pastiche of that, because it takes it to its absolute logical extreme. This guy, what he tries to do through various forms of meditation and medication and process, very abstruse processes is take control of the one thing that he absolutely shouldn't which is his own body one of the things that bothers him about his life is the fact that all of the mechanisms and processes of his of his body are still automatic they're controlled by parts of his brain and parts of his anatomy that he has no particular control over or even conscious awareness of. So he embarks upon this endeavour to become conscious of them and to take conscious control of them. And he succeeds. He absolutely succeeds. And the book, the, the, rather the short story, in, it, the horror of the short story comes from exploring the sensory experience of that, of that very state. So suddenly... This guy is aware of every tiny process that's happening in his body. He is aware of cells replicating, dividing, and dying. He is aware of organs pulsing, uh, uh, pulsing, processing, and pulsating, and of of like of enzymes excreting, and of his blood pumping, and of the the synaptic processes in his brain. He is aware of them to the most acute detail, and suddenly they are not happening automatically. Suddenly he has to take conscious control of them, and you can imagine, right? You can see where this obsession with absolute control the minutiae leads he effectively becomes a pr temporarily becomes a prisoner in his own body which is a, a, a vessel a church of torments because being conscious of these processes demonstrates what a horror show our bodies and our biological functions are right it's agonizing it's unpleasant it's disgusting it's repulsive and it requires so much effort that he can't do anything about it there's no way a conscious mind something as limited as our own consciousness is can coordinate all of those different processes at once it's why we don't do it consciously it's why we've evolved so that we don't almost everything we do is automatic right if it wasn't if you had to be aware of every element every process of your being you would die almost immediately you would start to die almost immediately and that's what happens here there is a point where he almost gets it he almost manages to take control of the whole thing but he realizes that even like standing up even moving an arm even the most the most what seems the most minuscule the most incidental process to the to us isn't anymore he has to coordinate so much of his bodily functions in order to do something like that that it's made him a prisoner in his own body and then at the very end he starts to develop a cold he know he 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 becomes consciously aware of a a virus of a uh, an intruder and it completely destroys him he he cannot muster the defenses and the processes that his body needs in order to, in order to defend itself and it is horrific the the way kane boils down the 
the processes and functions of the body and makes them not by e- exaggerating them to any degree but just m- just describes them just describes what they are what we are doing and what we are experiencing every second of every day and makes them a matter of horror is stunning it is absolutely wonderfully brilliant it is it is effectively a synthesis of what body horror is it is a manifesto of body horror described in the the most refined terms it is sincerely sensational and it's one of those short stories that when i read it kind of arrested me because i thought it was beautiful elegant um without pretension or exaggeration the, the, the pro style is very almost documentarian. It's very refined and pared down as it has to be given what it's trying to do. It is, if you want to understand what body horror is and what body horror can do, because it's, although it does refine the subjects of body horror down to the finest detail and principle, it also demonstrates how those subjects then become gateways into wider metaphorical readings. As I say, there is there are implications here for certain kinds of ideological persuasion, like basically certain kinds of right-wing, th- right-wing thought or myths, you know, the myth of the rugged individual for example which is complete bullshit on any number of levels it's bullshit historically it's bullshit culturally it's certainly bullshit politically um it's a myth you know it's an example of right-wing aesthetics and myth making this story takes that and it basically takes it to its it does what certain comedians do when they are parodying certain kinds of ideology and again demonstrates that very fine line between comedy and horror it takes those principles and then says okay well let's take the assumptions of those ideologies as read and let's take them to their logical extreme which he does here which is a degree of control of and individualism that is absolutely self-destructive it is brilliant it is genuinely stunning and i can't recommend it highly enough i will i will put a link to where you can buy the collection below traumas by paul kane biorhythms really amazing piece of work